That's why, obviously, it factors into me picking that he's not going to win the TNT belt, even if this was like a year in. Yeah. Um, I probably wouldn't be picking Jake Hager. Um, anywho, night two. Night two. All right. Let's go. Night numero der. Um, we got uh, the Young Buckies. And yes. FTR. Whatever you guys want to say FTR stands for, it's all up to you. But Young Bucks and FTR facing off against the Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Brothers. The return of Pentagon Jr. and Dynamite this week. And now we have uh, Tiff with her FTR sign into the camera. Hello, Tiff. FTR. <laughs> Tiff, what do you have FTR standing for? I don't know. <laughs> Free the... I don't know. Oh, okay, Kyle. Let's go. I can't. I'm not going to sit here and think of creative ways to do FTR. All right. Anyway, let's, let's go on. <laughs> for the revolt. Uh, no, they can't do that. Anyways, uh, Butcher and Blade, Lucha Brothers teaming up. I thought that was pretty cool what they did on Dynamite, like uh, yeah, taking FTR's thing. car and like, threatening to like, smash it with a baseball bat if they came any closer. And then the Lucha uh, Brothers kind of returning. So it's cool. It's going to be an interesting for- dynamic because... FTR is basically the complete opposite. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> the chat is killing me. Ray said, follow the Ray. Oh. F- Margaret said, F the Republicans. And ooh, Kilroy said, follow ooh, the rules. Ooh, Kilroy, ooh. <laughs> it's my boy. Follow the rules. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? They're all about the rules of tag you team, You guys right? are funny. Like, I feel like that should be a fan tweet. <laughs> Wrong answers only. <laughs> what does FTR stand for? God. Um, we should do that and put that on our show next week. Yes. Clip that. Uh, <laughs> another match put together in the Go Home Show. Uh, we've seen this <laughs> kind of build between FTR and the Butcher and the Blade and the Young Bucks over the last couple of weeks. Again, Lucha Brothers finally back after Pentagon not being allowed into the country due to COVID restrictions. It's good to see him back together and safe. Uh, this match is another showcase match at, at Fighter Fest to prove that AEW really does have the best tag team division in the world, period. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting match. FTR is going to go out there proving that, you know, that all these other teams, they're going to go out there and prove to them that they are the real tag team wrestlers and this is, they're going to show them how real tag team wrestling looks. All the way down to the rules, like what Kil- Kilroy said, follow the rules, the, like the tag rope. You have to hold the rope when you're tagging someone. You know what I mean? Like that's what I love about FTR. They're all about doing tag team wrestling right, and it's going to be an interesting dynamic because the Lucha Brothers are literally the complete opposite of FTR. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two go together in the ring. Um, besides that, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how they get along. Uh, we know that FTR and Young Bucks kind of have some, you know, bad blood against each other. Butcher and Blade and Lucha Brothers, I mean, they're not really, you can't really say they're on the same page at at, at least. You know, they kind of, like, Butcher and Blade want to get their hands on FTR. Lucha Brothers are probably still have some heat on the Young Bucks, but, you know, they kind of want to get at FTR best because they're the new guys. The so, best feuds are with the Young Bucks and uh, Lucha Brothers. But best Lucha Brothers feud. and Butcher and the Blade, they're not teams that work together with other teams, so that's where there's a right. little bit of... Uh, you know, a little bit of blood there. Um, it's going to be a very good and spot-filled match for sure. Spot-filled is an understatement. There's going to be so many spots in this match. It's going to be hard to even keep track. I can tell this match is going to be insane. And But the winners, I think I, I think FTR and Young Bucks are going to get it done. I think for sure they're going to get it done. There's going to be like another stare down after. There's going to be something between these two teams. But I think Young Bucks and FTR finally get it done. This is where I disagree with you. Why? <laughs> because I don't think that they're going to pick up the win. I think this is going to be where the FTR starts uh, talking smack after they lose. And they'll be like, this is why we don't mess with the Young Bucks and blah, 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 blah. That's what I think is going to okay. happen. Yeah, I, I, think I, that's I, I see gonna, what you Yeah. I just, I just feel like it's not going to happen. I, uh, I'm glad that the Butcher and the Blade are back, and uh, we need to start building them as well. So, But no, I think this is going to be the start of the buildup between uh, the Young Bucks and FTR. It's not yet. We said maybe. We're hoping all out um, because I don't think they're going to drag it so long because this is what we do want. But I feel like it's going to be a start. And then be like, oh, this is why we don't mess with the Young Bucks. So I'm going with Butcher and Blade and Lucha Brothers. I feel if they do it right and they want to do like a year build with these guys, they could probably drag it out to Revolution because year builds could work if done right. We've seen it in wrestling. Yeah, we've seen in wrestling 
that year builds can work if you do the builds right. You start off with interaction, then you kind of fade away, and then you kind of slowly bring him back in between until you want to do the match. Right. So we'll see what happens. Like, I, I wouldn't mind them going it, at it all out, but then I wouldn't mind it at the same time if they dragged it out longer. But again, doing it properly. So right. as for the next match, we have SCU. And the Dark Order. Well, I guess Dark Order plus Colt Cabana because we don't really know if he's officially with them. Really hasn't been too much confirmation, but uh, we have all three members of SCU facing off against uh, Brody Lee. Stu Grayson has been chosen out of all the rest. I thought they would, he would go with 10. Like, you know, 10's kind of been built as his almost like his right-hand man kind of thing, but he's choosing Stu Grayson, which is a good pick. Stu Grayson's a good wrestler. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's time. And Cole Cabana. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. But I do want to make one note here um, that this uh, there's some news that kind of broke out. It's it slowly leaked out. It's all but confirmed yet. But um, this will be most likely the last time that all three members of SCU team with each other because it is being said that Scorpio Sky is now going to be transitioned into a singles competitor on Dynamite. So we've seen this. He's been... Uh, wrestling in singles com- competition on Dark lately, and it's just been Kazarian and CD. It looks like uh, with the news out of, I think it was yesterday I read it, that Scorpio Sky is going to be a singles competitor now. It's huge. I'm down for that. We've been saying this for like a long time. Like, give Scorpio Sky the push. It's 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 time. Like, yeah. want to see it. He's good. He can go on his own. But the thing is now is with, like, what, what happens to SCU now, Tiff? Because CD... Can't do this forever, and clearly he's getting up there in age. He looks so good in the ring, though. It doesn't I know, matter. He's I know he looked good this good. week. He's but... the fallen angel, like you know, like I no, like he can still go. This is this is still gonna this is still gonna go. Tiff, so. he's not twenty five anymore. <laughs> he's still good. He's I know still he's still good, good, and he but he's just, he's getting up there in age. So we're I, not gonna I, we're not gonna think about it. We're okay, not gonna think about it. We're not I just wanted I just want to see. I wonder what's gonna happen. But I think it, but I think it would be cool. You know what I think? I think it would be cool if if the deception happens where Kazarian and Christopher Daniels, I saw this idea somewhere on Twitter that these two have a career versus career match. And that's how, you know, Christopher Daniels chooses to go out. At, mm. He has a career match against Kazarian. Kazarian kind of turns heel and he defeats Christopher Daniels and ends his career. We'll see. But uh, I'm all again, like you said, I'm all for Scorpio getting a singles run. But yes, this could be the last me. time, guys, if the, if the news is true. So we'll see me, what give happens. Me, give me. This is an interesting matchup, though. I see you in Dark Order. So we've seen the story where Colt Cabana is joining the Dark Order semi, I guess. You can say joining the team. Uh, this week's Dynamite, Brody was uh, it was showcased that Brody was uh, showcasing to Colt Cabana. Uh, what could happen if he joins? I mean, he got that win. Like, I mean, Colt Cabana was a, the, the legal guy, but... The way Brody Lee like kind of like delivered it, like he 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 gave the the big boot and or the finisher and kind of said, "There you go, this is what happens when you when you you wrestle with us, you get wins." So could Colt be playing the Dark Order though? Could he be playing them? Or so you should be a very good match. Um, will we see maybe maybe the full transition of Colt joining the Dark Order? After this, if they pick up the victory, I don't know. I do have the Dark Order going over, though. I'm picking Dark Order winning over SCU here and continuing that trend of Brody Lee showing to Colt this is what happens if you join the Dark Order. You can't just make him lose now because it wouldn't make sense unless that Colt did something that he turned on the Dark Order. Unless Colt saying acts like he was playing the Dark Order all this time and that's the reason why they lose this match then there's no reason that Dark Order shouldn't win. So I'm picking Dark Order. I'm going with Dark Order and Colt Cabana as well because Colt's going to get the pin on this. He's going to, he's going to, I don't know who he's going to pin, but he's definitely going to win this one. So he's going to be like, oh, I'm winning. Like with, with uh, Dark Order. So I feel like it's going to be like a slow build of him joining and then eventually like he's going to like turn on. Uh, it's something different for Colt. You know yeah, I mean? it's it's. It, I'm down it's for crazy. it. Like, so and I wonder if Brody Lee like does a finisher or Great Grayson does a finish, and they kind of just go like, "There you go again." Like they tag yeah. him in or something. Like, "There you go, get the win." So. Yeah, no, Brad's right. He's the Colt is plan uh, is pinning Daniel. So, no, no, Kilroy, no. 
Ooh, no. kill Roy. Ooh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. Any who? Re who? All right, uh, who are we going on? To? We're going to Lance Archer with Justin Roberts against Joy Janela, who I presume will be with. Justin Roberts? J- Jake Roberts. <laughs> Sorry. Like, what's going on? Yeah, like- Justin Roberts, didn't you know, is now the new manager of Lance Archer. <laughs> Jake is actually going to be doing ring announcing now. So they, they've switched it up. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> And then Joy Janela is sure to have Sonny Kiss in his corner. So I'm, you know what, poor Joy Janela. But we have a prop bet. I want, I, want, I want to get a prop bet going here. Who does Lance Archer bring out in his entrance this week? Oh is it going to be someone from production? Is it going to be someone from catering? Is it going to be an enhancement talent? We got to get a prep prop bet going. I think it's going to be an enhancement talent. I think it's going to be one of the dark people. Yeah. <laughs> Poor pineapple Pete. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I hope it's not him. No, he'll be at ringside. Um, this feud uh, sort of started on dark a few weeks ago. It was weird because I mentioned it on the podcast a few weeks ago that Lance Archer randomly came out on an episode of Dark during Janela and Kiss's tag team match and kind of stared down Janela. So I presume yeah. this is where this is coming from. And yeah. then nothing really came out of it until this week on Dynamite where Lance Archer lived up to his moniker of Everybody Dies and he came out and absolutely flattened both Kiss and Janela. Just, just laid him out, done, done skis. That's it. Um, I pray Joey is ready for this match. I really do because it does not look good. And I presume you're going with me, Tiff. Lance Archer over Joey Janela in this match. Yeah. If you yeah. picked... Joey Janela, like this could be a Vegas bet for you to I win mean, lots of money if Joey Janela <laughs> wins this match. I mean, it would be good, but the fact that if you're building him in Sunny Kiss, but then I could see it that way as well, but I don't see it happening. So I'm sorry, Joey Janela. I love ya, but you. But know I kind of want to put some money on Joey Janela in Vegas because if he wins, <laughs> that's a lot of money right there. Because I, I kind of want to see the betting odds between Lance Archer and Joey Janela. That's can't be that great. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, so wow. this is interesting now. So Nyla Rose, saying she, they haven't said who she's facing, but she said she's going to be in action. But that's not the biggest part of this. The biggest part of it is that they made mention of it on commentary last night. And and Tony Khan revealed on AW Unrestricted, shout outs to them, uh, today that there's this is very huge. And her announcement is very huge and anything, but he left it off saying anything could happen. Something is happening with this Nyla Rose announcement. I don't know what it is, but she has a very important announcement with it. But it also says she's in action. So I imagine she's going to squash some enhancement talent like the girl from your mama's kitchen, Red Velvet or something. And then she's going to get to her announcement. But I'm interested to see what this is because they said it's huge. And, and Tony Khan went on a podcast today, a special edition of Unrestricted, to say that something big is happening with this announcement and anything could happen. So I'm very intrigued as to what this is going to be. Maybe a new faction? Maybe. Something here? Assuming she'll be squashing out enhancement talent, so I'm picking the winner, Nyla Rose, obviously. <laughs> I don't think... Uh, do we do a prediction for this? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Tiff, you're going to pick the enhancement talent to win? <laughs> well, this is this is my theory, right? This is actually, like, I was talking about this with Ray earlier, so I kind of like this thought process. Um, so I'm picking Nyla Rose, obviously. I'm, I'm going with I don't her, think we should count this as a prediction because there's well, there Well, okay. Well, anyway, match. last night I was, th- I was saying <laughs> something last night. I was like, what the hell happened to Awesome Kong and Aja Kong? I was like, can you imagine, like, if they come back? Um, yeah. Oh, so Aja Kong? That, oh my god, I forgot about Aja Kong. I was thinking about all what about this Awesome stuff. Kong? Where the hell is awesome she been? Kong, is that the one that is it, which one is the one that's in Glow? Because she's that's under awesome contract with Glow. Okay, so Awesome Kong can't it can't be Awesome Kong because she's in You're Glow. talking about the one that Brandy brought out at the first double or nothing, right? It made it a yeah. three to four way. Yeah. yeah. Awesome Kong. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was thinking about that last night. I was like, hmm. And I was like, but actually Ray made a good point and he's probably right. So he thinks that Rihu is make, is coming back. Oh. At this because it's kind of like. Rihu. Our, our Rihu. I'm kind of 
surprised. like Riho, Rio. Yeah, Rihu. We call her Rihu. Um, but I feel like we've seen this so many times. Like, I don't want to see it again. That's just me. I don't think it's um, that. But I can kind of see it happening that she comes back because we haven't seen it. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about her. <laughs> Actually, Brad put up oh. a really cool thing in the chat. I would love to see that. She, she answers Cody Rhodes' ch open challenge. What? No way. No way. They're not going to let intergender matches going. I right? like, look, I'm all for intergender matches. We talked about this all the time. That would break the it's barrier. Huge. It's huge. It would, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen with everything that's going on right now in, in, in the wrestling world and everything. It's just oh, not going to happen. It's too <laughs> sensitive right now. It's not happening, Brad. I'm sorry. I'm disagreeing with you on this one. It would be cool because I'm still with, intergender matches and i and tony khan's like not okay with it i i was hoping eventually we'll get it but it's not happening so um maybe we get awesome yeah. kong return a lot of people in the chat saying awesome kong return yeah. and it sets up a all-out match between yeah. nyla rose and awesome kong i'd be all for that um we'll see yeah. what happens though it's supposed to be huge so i mean they, they said they, they emphasize huge so maybe it is awesome kong yeah um Next, we're going to get into a new, uh, this is going to be a very exciting match. I'm so looking forward to this match. Cannot wait. Orange Cassidy versus Le Champion, Chris Jericho. Yes, Ooh. one of Tiff's Ooh. husbands. <laughs> Love him. Her constant oh list God. of husbands. I needed to be at his rescue last night when he went into the freaking audio thing. Oh, God, yeah. It wasn't the camera. It was the audio uh, where they had, like, the audio thing, like, set up. He went right into it. And I don't know if you saw Trent put on Instagram of them, like, fixing his ear and everything like that. So he didn't, it was, uh, he didn't, you know, protect himself quick enough. I saw that. Night. Um, so very, I'm very excited for this match. I cannot wait for them, for OC and Chris Jericho. This is going to be very entertaining and for what we saw this week, physical. I think these two are going to try to beat the crap out of each other because Jericho cut a very, very good promo on Orange Cassie, like calling him out. He's like, if you're going to do those stupid moves on me, that's not going to happen. And he's just calling him out on all the lazy crap that he does. Um, I think they both can put each other over very well. Uh, it's going to be a very different kind of match for sure for Jericho, but... As the champion has proven, he is one of the best in the game and, and can builds. wrestle pretty much anybody in any style at this point in his and career. And he makes stars. He makes stars, man. Yeah. Not that Orange Cassidy isn't a star, but he makes stars. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be very good. I can foresee a lot of antics in this match, but you know, with a healthy mix of wrestling in there as well, because both of them can wrestle. So I am very excited. This is gonna be a very entertaining match. But Tiff, I'm so sorry. Unfortunately for you, I'm picking Le Champion, Chris Jericho, to get the win over Orange Cassidy. We're going to fight. Don't look at me like we're that. Gonna I'm just, fight. I'm, I had to go with we're my gonna gut. Fight. Put him up because we're going to fight right now. Okay, well, How are you going to go against my husband? We have to do the press conference first. We got to wait. <laughs> press conference. Let's go. Let, okay, next week, press conference. Me and Kyle. Okay. We're going to talk about Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho. Bring your mask. But, okay, I got, I got my mask. I got you. Anyway. <laughs> It's happening. The orange juice spot is coming. <laughs> you think so? We're finally going to get it? We're finally going to get the... <laughs> anyway. It's happening. The orange juice spot is coming. <laughs> you think so? We're finally going to get it? We're finally going to get the... <laughs> I'm going to say this like every time Orange Cassidy wrestles. Until this damn orange juice spot happens, I'm going to say it every time that we do a prediction show. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> Everything how... pro wrestling in the chat. No, is... because Jericho is the freaking man right like jericho is the goat i love him he makes stars like i this is more exciting to me than him orange cassidy versus Pac. and like mm. this is gonna be the match and i hope to god we get this orange juice freaking spot where he spits it in freaking jericho's face because jericho is the one that's gonna take it right he got hit over the head with a bottle of champagne so this is where this is the, this is the perfect save for this spot it has to happen and orange mm -hmm. cassidy needs this win because he just hasn't got one and this this will be huge if he gets this win over chris jericho so i'm sorry i'm going with my husband he's gorgeous and <laughs> <laughs> we don't want the smoke we want the oj yes. we want the juice yes <laughs> we want the juice hey, get spit because of covid stop they get tested all the time okay <laughs> yeah, every day <laughs> yes um, so, anyway. anywho Rihu. 
So oh. you're, I'm going Jericho. You're going Osti. I'm, I can't wait for that match. Should be great. Yeah. So I mean, speaking of COVID, it kind of ties into the main event here. So John Moxley is going to be facing Brian Cage with Taz for the AW World Championship. Now we did receive the unfortunate news over the last 24 to 48 hours of uh, Moxley. Uh, taking himself out of dynamite this week, which is a smart thing to do. That just proves that like Moxley is the hero we all need. This guy pulled himself out because of Renee Young, who has, I mean, he obviously has been in contact with her over the last couple of weeks. Renee Young has tested positive for COVID-19. So, you know, he, him doing the smart thing and not wanting to be at AEW, pulling himself out. And I'm sure AEW has pulled and have tested the people. I mean, they test every day. So they know that, Anyone that Moxie's come in contact with over the last couple of weeks, they'll know. Um, the one thing is here that is if Moxley does eventually get it, because he's not showing symptoms now. He Again, we got to clarify this. He doesn't have it now. He's just pulling himself out because he's been in contact with Renee Young. And you know what? He's smart for wanting to pull himself out from that because if Renee Young gets worse, you know, he doesn't want to be at Fighter Fest. He doesn't want to be on AWTV. He kind of wants to be home taking care of his wife. So... We, we don't know. He might not get it. Again, guys, it takes up to 14 days to show symptoms with some people. He's doing the smart thing. And if Moxie eventually does get COVID-19, this match won't happen. Moxie and Cade will be moved. Now, we're going to do... I think Tiff, I think the smart thing to do here is do a double prediction. We're going to do a prediction this, uh, on if this match actually happens. And then me and you are going to think of one match we think they could do in the meantime maybe a replacement match and I have a replacement match set. So uh, Moxley and Brian Cage, if the match happens, we'll talk about that first. Um, AW world championship again with the tough news that we got with Moxley, Renee young. Um, this will be another tough test for John Moxley. He has been, this guy has been through wars. <laughs> I mean this past year, you know what I mean? He's gone from like that Omega type I can't really say death match because I know you'll yell at me because it's not a death match, but that crazy full gear type of death match to the brutal war he had with Chris Jericho revolution. And then the thing he went through with Brody Lee and the dark order beatdowns. John Moxley's like had a rough road with the lead up to his championship victory and with his championship. Like he hasn't had a simple road here at AEW. And now he's got to face a guy like Brian cage. He's not going to be any walk in the park. For John Moxley. He's shown how much of a monster that he truly is. And has the advantage over Mox. So far in this feud I think. He with that whole car windshield thing. Like he. Yeah. B- Brian Cage has shown that he. You know. This could. <laughs> he's proven that he could probably take the title off of John Moxley. I really want to still say that it's too early for Mox to lose the title. But we don't know what AEW has plans for booking wise. We don't know. They could take a title off somebody two months into it or three months into it if the story made sense and they have a, a really good story in place. But I'm going to stick with Moxley holding on to it. I think he will lose it at the right time in the right place, which this is definitely not the right time in the right place, even if COVID wasn't happening. This won't be his only title reign, though. Moxley will have multiple title reigns in the future. This guy still has a lot to give. So I'm picking winner and still Moxley for the world championship. Now, it's too soon to pull this belt off for him. So, and Cage is not the guy. Sorry, I know a lot of people think Cage is the guy. Cage is not the guy to pull this off. So, yeah. and I still think we're going to get the feud between Moxley and MJF at All yeah. Out. So, Brian Cage is, man, he's an <laughs> absolute monster, this guy, though. He's a monster, but uh, me personally, Moxley's the bigger guy here to, you know, so to hold the belt. So, it's too soon to take that. No, belt I don't, I don't mean him. like he's a monster, he's going to win the title. I'm just saying, Brian Cage no, in general. No, no, he, he's, he's, he's juiced. He's yeah. jacked. Like, he's. <laughs> The guy eats bricks for breakfast. He's like, he's a juice. <laughs> that is what I define a juice head. That's yeah. just like, like jacked and like, no, like that. So he no, can probably can't touch his own guy. back. And then I thought that you got to think about all those weeks that like we didn't have him and stuff. And that's not fair that, you know, to like take the belt off of him when he never really had like proper time to yeah. like hold the belt. So this is the man to hold the belt. That belt's not coming off of him yet. Absolutely not. The cage is not the guy he's losing the belt to. Sorry. And I've loved so, Taz with Cage. Taz has been a very good mouthpiece. He cut another very Taz, good promo this week. It. Yeah. yeah. He, and he gets so. intense. Like, he gets... I love how Taz gets... He puts, like, all his effort into it. Like, 
saying, where, where are you, Mox? Where are you? Oh, you see that cage? He's like pointing the camera. He's right there, sitting at home with some bullshit excuse, like bringing real word world crap into this. I'm like, oh, okay. Like it was very, very crazy. And, you know, some people would say may not need it, but man, was that ever like, I was like, oh man, they're bringing like real life shit into this. Like they're making this feud intense and you kind of need something like that for your main championship. So I think they did a pretty good job of doing that. So I am all for this. We're both going with Mox. Now, Tiff, if the unfortunate happens and we don't get the main as this more See, main championship. You should have prepared me like before the podcast because like I can't think of anybody. I'm probably going to say this so and you're probably going to agree thought? with me. You're probably going to okay. agree with me. I think Cody Rhodes has a double championship defense. I think he holds an open challenge. If they find out on the day of Fighter Fest or the night before that Moxie okay. can't go... Cody Again. Rhodes is going to say, okay, I'm defending the TNT Championship on another night of Fighter Fest. I'm going to do two nights in a row, and I'm going to hold an open challenge. Okay. Okay. See, that I could definitely see to, like, make up for it since he keeps saying open challenge, open challenge. Yeah. So, yeah, that I can I can be down with. You want to know so. who I think is going to answer it, too, if they do it that way? Who? Cool. So, we know that Pentagon Jr. is back now? I mean, I'd be down for a singles run with that. With if he's back. Pickup. If he's back. Not Pentagon Jr. Pac answers the challenge oh my god give yeah. me <laughs> give me take my money please take my money Pac, like, if he's back if he's back oh Pac answers the challenge god. and faces cody rhodes for the tnt championship that would be a crazy insane way to return it would be a massive main event <laughs> um or i mean you never know i wouldn't mind brian cage either maybe brian cage faces cody for the tnt championship <laughs> That's another See, one that's good. Pac, I would love to take the belt off Moxley. That's more believable to me. Not Cage. Pac. Yeah. Like, but I love like I love this idea. <laughs> I'm all for this. Take my money. <laughs> I sat there and thinking, I'm like, man, what would be a good way to do it? I kind of like then I like Cody Rose stuck out to me. I'm like, Cody Rose, he's saying, like, I want to defend this championship every week. And if if Mox can't go, then you know, he's gonna come out and say, look. It, I mean, it's a week. It's not like these are night. These nights are back to back, right? It's a week, so Cody Rhodes will still be fresh, and yeah. he can defend his TNT Championship in that main event. And then you do it like a return, or like but I, if I, Pac's I, there, like if yeah, Pac's there. But I, I don't think I mean. it's because even like Brad said, he said I don't think overseas flights are running. So if that was the no. case, then we would see TH two. So yeah, but, but if he, we'll if he see. wanted enough, I'd imagine Tony oh, Khan could goodness. fly. <laughs> you got me hyped just yeah. thinking about that. <laughs> So I'm all for it, but yeah. yeah, so we'll see what happens. So mm. fingers crossed. We'll see where we're at next week. So yeah, we'll see. Hopefully the, you know, it's not bad and, and Moxie's okay to go. When we have Moxie's cage. I'd rather see that, but I wouldn't mind, or I could see them doing a open challenge. Even if it's not Pac, a, a still a Cody Rhodes open challenge. And they'll, they'll think of somebody to, to, to choose and it'll be an epic match. So we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah. That's uh, that's it for predictions. So, guys, I told you, next week will be the night one review, which will be, again, Thursday back here live at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And the week after will be the night two review. We're going to review both nights, and it will be right here on the All Elite Podcast. So, because of that, Tiff, these people out there, our fans of the podcast, and the W fans, want to do one thing in particular that's most important to make yeah. sure you're keeping up to date with us and that is following us on all social platforms. You can follow the podcast on social platforms at All Elite Podcast on Facebook, All Elite Pod on Instagram and Twitter, on the No Holds Bar Network on Facebook as well, No Holds Bar Network. Go check out the Facebook group, guys. The No Holds Bar Facebook group is an awesome, awesome wrestling group on there with like people post so much crap on there. It's amazing. Interact with everybody on there. Everyone's so friendly. Go check out the No Holds Bar Network Facebook group. Follow it on Twitter at NHB Network and on Instagram at No Holds Bar Network as well. And check out the new website, NoHoldsBarNetwork.com. We can keep up to date with everything uh, wrestling podcast related on the network as well. Big shout out to Darren and These Wolves. He lets us use the song Dead to Me for the podcast, which uh, is used every single week. Darren, thank you very much. Thank you for letting us use the song uh, Tom's Diner, which was the countdown song this week. Thank you very much, uh, Darren. And go check him out, guys, and show Darren some love. Follow him on all the socials. Follow him on his music. These wolves. Music for the elite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't so, wait to pop champagne with him. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I can't wait 
to get into Fighter Fest. The next two weeks in a row, guys. Fighter Fest is here, night one and two. Can't wait to see what happens. A pay per view themed dynamite for free for us for the next two weeks. I mean, they could have easily just done a Saturday and made us pay for it, but we have to thank Tony Khan and, and everyone at AEW for, for giving us this for the next two weeks. It's amazing, especially through a time that we're going through right now, and I cannot wait to see it. And I cannot wait to see what happens with these predictions, and I just cannot wait for some more AEW. So that's going to wrap it up, guys, for this episode of the All Elite Podcast right here on the No Holds Bar Network, which is your source for all wrestling podcast content and more. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and always joined by my co-host, she's EVP of Giggles, the heartbreak chick, and the queen of the indies herself, Tiffany. God, (laughs) it should have been better, but it's not. It's okay. Guys, we'll see you guys back here next week. Same time, same great place, same day for the uh, uh, AEW Fighter Fest review for night one. See you guys next time. me I-